Maya stele singular stela are monuments that were fashioned by the Maya civilization of ancient Mesoamerica. They consist of tall, sculpted stone shafts and are often associated with low circular stones referred to as altars, although their actual function is uncertain. Many stele were sculpted in low relief, although plain monuments are found throughout the Maya region. The sculpting of these monuments spread throughout the Maya area during the Classic period 250 to 900 AD, and these pairings of sculpted stele and circular altars are considered a hallmark of classic Maya civilization. The earliest dated stela to have been found in situ in the Maya lowlands was recovered from the great city of Tikal in Guatemala. During the Classic period almost every Maya kingdom in the southern lowlands raised stele in its ceremonial center. Stele became closely associated with the concept of divine kingship and declined at the same time as this institution. The production of stele by the Maya had its origin around 400 BC and continued through to the end of the Classic period, around 900. Although some monuments were reused in the post classic circa 900 to 1521. The major city of Calakmul in Mexico raised the greatest number of stele known from any Maya city, at least 166, although they are very poorly preserved. Hundreds of stele have been recorded in the Maya region, displaying a wide stylistic variation. Many are upright slabs of limestone sculpted on one or more faces, with available surfaces sculpted with figures carved in relief and with hieroglyphic text. Stele in a few sites display a much more three-dimensional appearance where locally available stone permits, such as at Copan and Tanina. Plain stele do not appear to have been painted nor overlaid with stucco decoration, but most Maya stele were probably brightly painted in red, yellow, black, blue and other colors. Stele were essentially stone banners raised to glorify the king and record his deeds, although the earliest examples depict mythological scenes. Imagery developed throughout the Classic period, with early Classic stele circa 250 to 600 displaying non-Maya characteristics from the 4th century onwards, with the introduction of imagery linked to the central Mexican metropolis of Teotihuacan. This influence receded in the 5th century although some minor Teotihuacan references continued to be used. In the late 5th century, Maya kings began to use stele to mark the end of calendrical cycles. In the late Classic circa 600 to 900, Imagery linked to the Mesoamerican ball game was introduced, once again displaying influence from central Mexico. By the Terminal Classic, the institution of divine kingship declined, and Maya kings began to be depicted with their subordinate lords. As the Classic period came to an end, stele ceased to be erected, with the last known examples being raised in 909 to 910. Function The function of the Maya stela was central to the ideology of Maya kingship from the very beginning of the Classic period through to the very end of the Terminal Classic 800 to 900. The hieroglyphic inscriptions on the stele of the Classic period side of Piedras Negras played a key part in the decipherment of the script, with stele being grouped around seven different structures and each group appearing to chart the life of a particular individual, with key dates being celebrated, such as birth, marriage and military victories. From these stele, Epigrapher Tatiana Proskuryakov was able to identify that they contained details of royal rulers and their associates, rather than priests and gods as had previously been theorized. Epigrapher David Stewart first proposed that the Maya regarded their stele as Tatun, stone trees, although he later revised his reading to Lakum Tun, meaning banner stone, from Lakum meaning banner in several Mayan languages and Tun meaning stone. According to Stewart this may refer to the stele of stone versions of vertical standards that once stood in prominent places in Maya city centers, as depicted in ancient Maya graffiti. The name of the modern Lacand in Maya is likely to be a colonial corruption of this word. Maya stele were often arranged to impress the viewer, forming lines or other arrangements within the ceremonial center of the city. Maya cities with a history of stone carving that extended back into the early classic preferred to pair their stele with a circular altar which may have represented a cut tree trunk and have been used to perform human sacrifice, given the prevalence of sacrificial imagery on such monuments. An alternative interpretation of these altars is that they were in fact thrones that were used by rulers during ceremonial events. Archaeologists believe that they probably also served as ritual pedestals for incense burners, ceremonial fires and other offerings. The core purpose of a stela was to glorify the king. Many Maya stele depict only the king of the city, and describe his actions with hieroglyphic script. Even when the individual depicted is not the king himself, the text or scene usually relates the subject to the king. Openly declaring the importance and power of the king to the community, the stela portrayed his wealth, prestige and ancestry, and depicted him wielding the symbols of military and divine power. Stele were raised to commemorate important events, especially at the end of a Katun 20-year cycle of the Maya calendar, or to mark a quarter or a half Katun. 
The stela did not just mark off a period of time, it has been argued that it physically embodied that period of time. The hieroglyphic texts on the stele describe how some of the calendrical ceremonies required the king to perform ritual dance and bloodletting. At Tikal, the twin pyramid groups were built to celebrate the Katun ending and reflected Maya cosmology. These groups possessed pyramids on the east and west sides that represented the birth and death of the sun. On the south side, a nine-doored building was situated in order to represent the underworld. On the north side was a walled enclosure that represented the celestial region, it was left open to the sky. It was in this celestial enclosure that a stellar altar pair was placed, the altar being a fitting throne for the divine king. Kalakmal practiced a tradition that was unusual in the Maya area, that of raising twin stele depicting both the king and his wife. The iconography of stele remained reasonably stable during the classic period, since the effectiveness of the propaganda message of the monument relied upon its symbolism being clearly recognizable to the viewer. However, at times a shift in the socio-political climate induced a change in iconography. Stele were an ideal format for public propaganda since, unlike earlier architectural sculpture, they were personalized to a specific king, could be arranged in public spaces and were portable, allowing them to be moved and reset in a new location. An important feature of Stele was that they were able to survive different phases of architectural construction unlike architectural sculpture itself. With the ability to portray an identifiable ruler bearing elite goods, accompanied by hieroglyphic text and carrying out actions in service of the kingdom, Steely became one of the most effective ways of delivering public propaganda in the Maya lowlands. In 7th century Copan, King Chanimix Kawil raised a series of seven Steely that marked the boundary of the most fertile land in the Copan Valley, an area of approximately 25 to 30 square kilometers 9.7 to 11.6 square miles as well as marking the boundary. They defined the sacred geometry of the city and referred to important seats of deities in the ceremonial center of the Copan. Ritual significance Steely were considered to be invested with holiness and, perhaps, even to contain a divine soul-like essence that almost made them living beings. Some were apparently given individual names in hieroglyphic texts and were considered to be participants in rituals conducted at their location. Such rituals in the classic period appear to have included a Kaltan binding ritual, in which the stela was wrapped in bands of tied cloth. This ritual was closely tied to the Katun ending calendrical ceremony. A Kaltan ritual is depicted carved onto a peccary skull deposited as a funerary offering at Copan. The scene shows two nobles flanking a stela altar pair where the stela seems to have been bound with cloth. The act of wrapping or binding a sacred object was of considerable religious importance across Mesoamerica, and is well attested among the Maya right up to the present day. The precise meaning of the act is not clear, but may be to protect the bound object or to contain its sacred essence. The binding of stele may be linked to the modern quiche Maya practice of wrapping small divinatory stones in a bundle. A stela was not just considered a neutral portrait, it was considered to be owned by the subject, whether that subject was a person or a god. Stela tree from El Zapotan Guatemala is a small monument dating from the early classic period, the front of the stela bears a portrait of the rain god Yaxalchik, clear water chick. The accompanying text describes how the deity Yaxalchik himself was dedicated, not just his image on the stela. This could be taken to imply that the stela was seen as the embodiment of the deity and is also true of those steely bearing royal portraits, which were seen to be the supernatural embodiment of the ruler they represented. The stela, combined with any accompanying altar, was a perpetual enactment of royal ceremony in stone. David Stewart has stated that steely do not simply commemorate past events and royal ceremonies but serve to perpetuate the ritual act into eternity, thus ascribing a magical effectiveness to stela depictions. In the same vein, Steely bearing royal portraits may have been magically loaded extensions of the royal person Uba himself, extremely powerful confirmations of political and religious authority. Steely bearing images of multiple people, for instance of several nobles performing a ritual or of a king with his war captives, were likely to be exceptions to this idea of the stela as sacred embodiment of the subject. At times, when a new king came to power, old steely would be respectfully buried and replaced with new ones, or they might be broken. When a Maya city was invaded by a rival, it was pillaged by the victors. One of the most striking archaeological markers of such an invasion is the destruction of the defeated city Stele, which were broken and cast down. At the end of the pre-classic, around 150 AD, this fate appears to have befallen the important city of El Mirador, where most of the Stele were found smashed. Manufacture Royal artisans were sometimes responsible for sculpting Stele, in some cases these sculptors were actually the sons of kings. 
In other cases it is likely that captive artisans from defeated cities were put to work raising stele for the victors, as evidenced by the sculptural style of one city appearing upon monuments of its conqueror soon after its defeat. This appears to have been the case in Piedras Negras where Stella 12 depicting war captives submitting to the victorious king is carved in the style of Pomona, the defeated city. Archaeologists believe that this may also have been the case with Quiriga after its surprise defeat of its overlord Copan. Stele were usually crafted from quarry limestone, although in the southern Maya area other types of stone were preferred. Volcanic tuff was used at Copan to craft their stele in three dimensions. Both limestone and tuff were easily worked when first quarried and hardened with exposure to the elements. At Quiriga hard red sandstone was used that was unable to reproduce the three-dimensionality of Gopon but was of sufficient strength that the kings of the city were able to raise the tallest free-standing stone monuments in the Americas. The Maya lacked beasts of burden and did not employ the wheel, therefore the freshly quarried blocks of stone had to be transported on rollers along the Maya causeways. Evidence of this has been found on the causeways themselves, where rollers have been recovered. The blocks were sculpted to their final form while still soft and they then hardened naturally with time. Stone was usually quarried locally but was occasionally transported over great distances. Calakmul in Mexico was one of two powerful cities that shaped the political landscape of the classic period, the other being Tikal. It imported black slate for one stela from the Maya mountains, more than 320 kilometers 200 miles away. Although Calakmul raised the greatest number of steely known from any Maya city, they were sculpted from poor quality limestone and have suffered severe erosion, rendering most of them illegible. Stele could be of substantial size. Quiriga Stella E measures 10.6 meters 35 feet from the base to the top, including the 3 meter 9.8 feet buried portion holding it in place. This particular monument has a claim to being the largest freestanding stone monument in the New World and weighs about 59 tons 65 short tons. Stella 1 of 9 can is one of the tallest monuments in the Patan Basin measuring 4.13 meters 13.5 feet high, not including the buried portion, and is roughly 2 meters 6.6 feet wide and 0.39 meters 1.3 feet thick. Maya stele were worked with stone chisels and probably with wooden mallets. Hammer stones were fashioned from flint and basalt and were used for shaping the softer rocks used to make stele, while fine detail was completed with smaller chisels. Originally most were probably brightly painted in red, yellow, black, blue and other colors using mineral and organic pigments. At Copan and some other Maya cities, some traces of these pigments were found upon the monuments. Generally all sides of a stela were sculpted with human figures and hieroglyphic text, with each side forming a part of a single composition. Undecorated stele in the form of plain slabs or columns of stone are found throughout the Maya region. These appear never to have been painted or to have been decorated with overlaid stucco sculpture. History Pre-classic origins The Maya sculptural tradition that produced the stele emerged fully formed and had probably been preceded by sculpted wooden monuments. However the tradition of raising stele had its origin elsewhere in Mesoamerica, among the Olmecs of the Gulf Coast of Mexico. In the late pre-classic it then spread into the Isthmus of Tehuantepec and southwards along the Pacific coast to sites such as Chiapa de Corzo, Izpa and Tacalicabaj where Mesoamerican long count calendar dates began to be carved onto the stele. Although at eyes by the stele depicted mythological scenes, at Tikalikabaj they began to show rulers in early classic Maya posture accompanied by calendrical dates and hieroglyphic texts. It was also at Tikalikabaj and Izpa that these stele began to be paired with circular altars. By approximately 400 BC, near the end of the middle pre-classic period, early Maya rulers were raising stele that celebrated their achievements and validated their right to rule. At El Portón in the Salama Valley of Highland Guatemala a carved schist stela monument one was erected, the badly eroded hieroglyphs appear to be a very early form of Maya writing and may even be the earliest known example of Maya script. It was associated with a plain altar in a typical stela altar pairing that would become common across the Maya area. Stela 11 from Caminal UU, a major pre-classic highland city dates to the middle pre-classic and is the earliest stela to depict a standing ruler. The sculpted pre-classic stele from Caminal Uyu and other cities in the region, such as Chachuapa in El Salvador and Chocala in the Pacific Lowlands, tend to depict political succession, sacrifice and warfare. These early stele depicted rulers as warriors or wearing the masks and headdresses of Mayan deities, accompanied by texts that recorded dates and achievements during their reigns, as well as recording their relationships with their ancestors. Stele came to be displayed in large ceremonial plazas designed to display these monuments to maximum effect. The raising of stele spread from the Pacific coast and adjacent highlands throughout the Maya area. 
The development of Maya stele coincides with the development of divine kingship among the classic Maya. In the southern Maya area, the late pre-classic stele impressed upon the viewer the achievements of the king and his right to rule, thus reinforcing both his political and religious power. At the middle pre-classic city of Nakb in the central lowlands, Maya sculptors were producing some of the earliest lowland Maya stele, depicting richly dressed individuals. Nakb Stella I has been dated to around 400 BC. It was broken into pieces, but originally represented two elaborately dressed figures facing each other, and perhaps represents the transference of power from one ruler to his successor, however it also has features that recall the myth of the Maya hero twins, and would be the earliest known presentation of them. Around 200 BC the enormous nearby city of El Mirador had started to erect Stella-like monuments, bearing inscriptions that appear to be glyphs but that are so far unreadable. Stella dating to the late pre-classic period are also known from the sites of El Tintal, Civil, and San Bartolo in Guatemala, and Axuncan and Cajalpec in Belize. On the Pacific coast El Baal Stella I features a date in its hieroglyphic text that equates to 36 AD. It depicts a ruler bearing a scepter or a spear with a double column of hieroglyphic text before him. At Tikalik Abajar II Steely Stella II and Stella V depicting the transfer of power from one ruler to another, they both show two elaborately dressed figures facing each other with a column of hieroglyphic text between them. The long count date on Stella II dates it to the 1st century BC at the latest, while Stella V has two dates, the latest of which is 126 AD. The Stella was associated with the burial of a human sacrifice and other offerings. Stella XIII at Tikalik Abaj also dates to the late pre-classic. A massive offering of more than 600 ceramic vessels was found at its base, together with 33 obsidian prismatic blades and other artifacts. Both the stele and the offering were associated with a nearby late pre-classic royal tomb. At Cuello in Belize, a plain stele was raised around 100 AD in an open plaza. At the very end of the pre-classic period, around 100 to 300 AD, cities in the highlands and along the Pacific coast ceased to raise sculpted stele bearing hieroglyphic texts. This cessation in the production of stele was the most dramatic symptom of a general decline in the region at this time. This decline has been linked to the intrusion of peoples from the western highlands combined with the disastrous eruption of the Ilopango volcano that severely affected the entire region. Early Classic In the central Pantan lowlands, the rise of individual rule at cities like Tikal required the development of new forms of public imagery. Pre-classic imagery had involved largely anonymous, impersonal sculpture as an architectural element. The existing pre-classic Baten styles of architectural sculpture were combined with features of the highland and Pacific coast tradition to produce the early classic Maya Stella. Features formerly found on architectural sculpture, such as the giant masks adorning pre-classic pyramids, were adapted for use on stele. For example, the so-called jester god was transferred to the headdress of the ruler portrayed on Tikal Stella 29, which bears the oldest long count date yet found in the Maya lowlands equating to 292 AD. At some Maya cities the first appearance of stele corresponded with the foundation of dynastic rule. The standard form of the Maya stela incorporating art, calendrical dates and hieroglyphic text onto a royal monument only began to be erected in the Maya lowlands after 250 AD. The late 4th century saw the introduction of non-Maya imagery linked to the giant metropolis of Teotihuacan in the Valley of Mexico. This foreign influence is seen at Tikal, Uaxactan, Rio Azuli and El Zapo, all in the Paten department of Guatemala. At Tikal this was initiated by the king Yaxnun Ayinai, from there it spread to his vassal cities. In the 5th century, this strongly Teotihuacan-linked imagery was abandoned by Yaxnun Ayinai's son Siaj Chan Kawil II, who reintroduced imagery associated with the Pacific coast and adjacent highlands. Minor references to Teotihuacan continued, for example in the form of Teotihuacan war emblems. His Stella 31 was originally erected in 445 but was later broken from its butt and was found buried in the city center, almost directly above his tomb. It depicts the crowning of Siaj Chan Ka Wheel II, with his father hovering above him as a supernatural being and is executed in traditional Maya style. On the sides of the Stella are carved two portraits of his father in a non-Maya style, dressed as a Teotihuacan warrior, bearing the central Mexican atlatl spear thrower not adopted by the Maya and carrying a shield adorned with the face of the Mexican god Tlaloc. The reverse of the stela bears a lengthy hieroglyphic inscription detailing the history of Tikal, including the Teotihuacan invasion that established Yaxnun Ayin Nayana's dynasty. In the early classic period the Maya kings began to dedicate a new stela, or other monument, to mark the end of each Katun cycle representing 7,200 days, just under 20 sidereal years. At Tikal, 
The first to do so was King Conchitum who ruled in the late 5th century. Stellanine from the city is the first dated monument raised to mark off a period of time, it was raised in 475. Late Classic In the Late Classic the sculpted images of rulers on Steely remained much the same as in the Early Classic, appearing in profile in the foreground and filling almost the entire available space, which is delimited by a frame. Imagery associated with the Mesoamerican ball game started to appear in the Maya lowlands in the Late Classic period. Maya kings are depicted as warriors wearing costume from the Mexican highlands, including elements such as the foreign god Tlaloc and the Tiati Haken serpent. Such imagery appears in the late classic on Steely from Naraño, Piedras Negras and the Pitex Batún cities of Dos Pilas and Aguatica. At Dos Pilas, a pair of Steely represent the king of the city in costume forming a jaguar and eagle pairing, characteristic of the Mexican warrior cult. Steely were being erected by the Maya across the entire central and southern Maya lowlands by 790, an area that encompassed 150,000 square kilometers 58,000 square miles. In the north, Koba on the eastern side of the Yucatan Peninsula raised at least 23 large steely. Although badly eroded their style and texts link them to cities from the Peten Basin. At the southern periphery of the Maya region, Copan developed a new high-relief style of steely and in 652 the 12th king Chanimix Kawil arranged a series of these steely to define the sacred geometry of the city, and to celebrate his royal rule and his ancestors. His son and successor Uaxaklaju and Yubaka Wheel further developed this new high-relief style of sculpture and erected a series of intricately decorated steely in the city's great plaza that brought the carving of steely close to full in the round three-dimensional sculpture. Both of these kings focused on their own images on their steely and emphasized their place in the dynastic sequence to justify their rule, possibly linked to a break in the dynastic sequence with the death of the 11th king of Copan. After Quiriga defeated its overlord Copan in 738, it brought massive blocks of red sandstone from quarries 5 kilometers 3.1 miles from the city and sculpted a series of enormous stelae that were the biggest monolithic monuments ever raised by the Maya. Stella E stands over 10 meters 33 feet high and weighs more than 60 tons. These stelae were shaped into a square cross section and were decorated on all four faces. These stelae usually bear two images of the Quiriga king, on the front and the back, in a lower relief than that found at Copan. They feature highly complex panels of hieroglyphic text that are among the most skillfully executed of all Maya inscriptions in stone. The stele have weathered well and display fine precision on the part of the sculptors. Terminal Classic The decline in the erection of stele is linked to the decline in the institution of divine kingship, which began in the late pre-classic. Originally the stele depicted the king with symbols of power, sometimes standing over defeated enemies and occasionally accompanied by his wives or his heir. By the Terminal Classic Kings were sharing steely with subordinate lords, who also played a prominent role in the events depicted. This reflected a decentralization of power and the bargaining between high-ranking nobles so that the king could maintain power, but led to a progressive weakening of the king's rule. As the position of the king became weaker and that of his vassals and subordinates became stronger, the latter began to erect their own steely, a function that was formerly the exclusive preserve of the king himself. Some of these subordinates broke away to form their own petty states. But even this did not last and they also ceased to erect monuments. In the Pasión River region of Petén, rulers began to be portrayed as ball players on stele. Cybel was the first site in the region to depict its rulers thus. 17 stele were erected at Cybel between 849 and 889, and show a mix of Maya and foreign styles, including a lord wearing the beaked mask of a Hakat, the central Mexican wind god, with a Mexican-style speech scroll emerging from the mouth. Some of these have a stylistic affinity with the painted murals at Cacaxtla, a non-Maya site in the central Mexican state of Tlaxcala. This hybrid style seems to indicate that the kings of Cybel were Maya lords adapting to changing political conditions by adopting a mix of symbols originating from both lowland Maya and central Mexican sources. Some of the more foreign-looking steely even bear non-Maya calendrical glyphs. Steely at Oxcantoc, to the north in the Puic region of the Yucatan Peninsula divided the face of the stela into up to three levels, each of which contained a different scene, usually of a lone figure that could be either male or female. The representation of the human figure differed from the formal treatment in the south, and were simplified, coarse representations lacking individuality amongst socio-political and religious symbols. As the classic Maya collapse swept across the Maya region, city after city ceased to erect stele recording its dynastic achievements. At the important city of Calakmul, Two stele were raised in 803 more in 810, but these were the last and the city fell into silence. At Oxcantoc the last stela was raised in 859. Stele 11, 
dated to 869, was the last monument to ever be erected at the once great city of Dikal. The last known Maya stele bearing a long count calendrical date are to Nina Monument 101, which was erected in 909 to mark the Katun ending that year, and Stella 6 from it seemed, dated to 910. Post-classic at Copan ritual offerings were deposited around the city's stele until at least 1000, which may represent the offerings of a surviving elite that still remembered its ancestors, or may be due to Highland Maya still regarding the city as a place of pilgrimage long after it had fallen into ruin. A small number of sculpted stele once stood at Cerro Quiac in the Guatemalan highlands, and are presumed to have been erected by Mam Maya in the 13th or 14th century. At La Manai and Belize, classic period stele were repositioned upon two small post-classic platforms dating to the 15th or 16th century. At La Milpa, also in Belize, at around the time of Spanish contact in the late 16th century a tiny remnant Maya population started to make offerings of conquest period pottery to stele perhaps in an effort to invoke the ancestors to help resist the Spanish onslaught. A plain stela and twin pyramid group Art Tikal was removed by the local inhabitants sometime during the post-classic, its accompanying altar was also moved but abandoned some distance from its original location. Some plain stele were raised at Tapaxt in the Petenlakes region of Guatemala in the post-classic, these were perhaps covered in stucco and painted. This may represent a revival of the Katun ending ceremonies that occurred in the Classic period, and reflected ties with the northern Yucatan. Discovery One of the earliest accounts of Maya stele comes from Diego Garcia de Palacio, a Spanish colonial official who described six of the stele at Gopan in a letter to King Philip II of Spain written in 1576. Juan Galindo, governor of Petén, visited Gopan in 1834 and noted the sculpted high-relief stele there. Five years later, American diplomat John Lloyd Stevens and British artist Frederick Catherwood arrived in war-torn Central America and set out for Copan, describing 15 Steely and Stevens incidents of travel in Central America, Chiapas, and Yucatan, published in 1841. Stevens and Catherwood noticed the presence of red pigment on some of the Copan Steely. Stevens unsuccessfully attempted to buy the ruins of Quariga, and purchased Copan for US 51,100 in 2018 with the idea of shipping the stele to New York for display in a new museum. In the event, he was prevented from shipping the monuments down the Copan River by the discovery of impassable rapids and all the stele remained at the site. While Stevens was engaged on business elsewhere, Catherwood carried out a brief investigation of the stele at Quiriga but found them very difficult to draw without a camera lucida due to their great height. Ambrosio Tut, governor of Petén, and Colonel Modesto Mendez, the chief magistrate, visited the ruins of Tikal in 1848 accompanied by Eusebio Lara, who drew some of the monuments there. In 1852 Modesto Mendez went on to discover Stella 1 and Stella 5 at Nainkun. English explorer Alfred Maud Slay arrived at Quiriga in 1881 and cleared the vegetation from the stele, then traveled on to see the stele at Capon. In the early 20th century, an expedition by the Carnegie Institution led by American Mayanus Sylvanus Morley discovered a stele to Axictun. This period marked a change from the efforts of individual explorers to those of institutions that funded archaeological exploration, excavation and restoration. Collections Notable collections of stele on public display include an impressive series of 8th-century monuments at Quiriga and 21 stele collected in the Sculpture Museum at Tikal National Park, both of which are World Heritage Sites in Guatemala. Calicmol, in Mexico, is another World Heritage Site that also includes many stele regarded as outstanding examples of Maya art. Copan in Honduras, also a World Heritage Site, possesses over 10 finely carved stele in the site core alone. The Museo Nacional de Arqueología y Etnología National Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology in Guatemala City displays a number of fine stele, including three 9th-century stele from Macacula, an 8th-century stela from Naraño and other stele from Ixchutes. Caminal Uy Louisiana Amelia, Piedras Negras, Cibol, Tikal, Uaxactun, and Ucanal. The Museo Nacional de Antropología National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City has a small number of Maya stele on display. The San Diego Museum of Man in California contains replicas of the stele from Quiriga that were made in 1915 for the Pacific California Exhibition. Many Maya archaeological sites have stele on display in their original locations, in Guatemala these include, but are not limited to, Aguatica, Dos Pilas, El Chal, Nainkun, Nicom, Cibel, Tacalacabaj, Uaxactun, and Yaha. In Mexico, stele may be seen at Yaxchilan, and the site museum at Tanina. Looting Stele have become threatened in modern times by plundering for sale on the international art market.
Many stele are found in remote areas and their size and weight prevents them from being removed intact. Various methods are used to cut or break a stela for easier transport, including power saws, chisels, acid and heat. When a monument is well preserved, the looters attempt to cut off its face for transport. Even when successful, this results in damage to inscriptions on the sides of the stela. At worst, this method results in complete fragmentation of the stela face with any recoverable sculpture removed for sale. Traceable fragments of well-known monuments have been purchased by American museums and private collectors in the past. When such monuments are removed from their original context, their historical meaning is lost. Although museums have justified their acquisition of steely fragments with the argument that such objects are better preserved in an institution, no stela has been sold in as good a condition as it was in its original location. After 1970 there was a sharp drop in Maya steely available on the New York art market due to the ratification of a treaty with Mexico that guarantees the return of stolen pre-Columbian sculpture that was removed from the country after the ratification date. In the early 1970s some museums, such as that of the University of Pennsylvania, responded to international criticism by no longer purchasing archaeological artifacts that lack a legally documented history, including place of origin, previous owners and an export license. Harvard University also instituted a similar policy in the early 1970s. In 1972, the initially well-preserved Stella 5 at Nine Kun was smashed into pieces by looters, who heated it until it shattered and then stole various pieces. A number of remaining fragments of the monument were rescued by archaeologist Ian Graham and transferred to the mayor's office in Dolores, Baten, where they were eventually used as construction material before once again being recovered this time by the Atlas Arqueológico de Guatemala in 1989, and moved to their archaeological laboratory. At the nearby site of Ixtenton, 7.5 kilometers 4.7 miles from Ninecun, most of the stele were robbed before the site's existence was reported to the Guatemalan authorities. By the time archaeologists visited the site in 1985 only two stele remained. In 1974, a dealer in pre-Columbian artifacts by the name of Hollins had arranged for the illegal removal of Macacula Stella II from the Guatemalan jungle. He and his co-conspirators were prosecuted in the United States under the National Stolen Property Act and they were the first people to be convicted under this act with reference to national patrimony laws. The act states, whoever transports, transmits, or transfers in interstate or foreign commerce any goods, of the value of 5,000 or more, knowing the same to have been stolen, converted or taken by fraud shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years, or both. Whoever receives, possesses, conceals, stores, barters, sells, or disposes of any goods, which have crossed a state or United States boundary after being stolen, unlawfully converted, or taken, knowing the same to have been stolen, unlawfully converted, or taken as subject to fine or imprisonment. The act was originally intended to discourage the handling of stolen property but several courts have judged that the National Stolen Property Act is sufficiently broad in scope to apply to goods crossing into the United States from a foreign nation, and is therefore applicable in the case of stolen cultural property. Under Guatemalan law, Maya Steely and other archaeological artifacts are property of the Guatemalan government and may not be removed from the country without its permission. In the case of Macaquil Estela II, the monument was well known before it was stolen and its illegal removal was easy to prove. The stela itself was cut into pieces, with the face being sawn off and moved to a fish packing factory in Belize, where it was packed into boxes and shipped to California. There it was seized by the Federal Bureau of Investigation after being offered for sale to various institutions. The stolen portion of the stela was returned to Guatemala and is now in storage at the Museo Nacional de Arqueología y Etnología in Guatemala City. Looting has been linked to the economic and political stability of the possessing nation, with levels of looting increasing during times of crisis. It also appears that art collectors have steely, or portions of them, stolen to order by browsing archaeological books and catalogs for desirable pieces. Examples of this may be found at Aguateca and El Peru, both in Guatemala's Patan department, where only the better preserved hieroglyphs and human faces were cut away.